hello everybody welcome back to my channel today i will be doing a real life test of this tamarind 35 to 150 to 2.8 i will be putting it through a bunch of tests and i will be showing you how versatile the lens is so stay tuned before we get into this video make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell button to not miss any of my future uploads and let's get right into it so we have this really nice um, area of light here it's like really nice with the pillars the building is really pretty so i'm gonna take some 35 direct sunlight photos because i think it's gonna be really beautiful so we're gonna go here and it's gonna be kind of oh it's gorgeous love that i'm gonna shoot from below as well gorgeous yeah i think the biggest selling point for this lens for me is the fact that it's so incredibly versatile I can go from shooting dramatic 35mm direct sunlight full body images to dreamy backlit close-up portraits without ever changing my gear. What if you're like like leaning against it or something or like, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah, beautiful. Love that. Uh-huh. So I'm using a 35 so I can be really close to her and crop out as many people and cars as possible. Another thing that I love about this lens is the fact that the f-stop goes down to f2 at lower focal lens. Don't get me wrong, I really do enjoy shooting on higher apertures like 3.5 to 5.6, but sometimes it's just really nice to have the option to go to, down to f2, especially if you're in a location that is just not that appealing or you're shooting on 35 and trying to get a bit more background separation to make your subject stand out. I find that the lens handled the light situations I threw at it really well without any major focus mishaps even when shooting backlit. Even though it's a third party lens and as you know these tend to not work as well as their native counterparts, this 35 to 150 has performed incredibly close to how my native Sony lenses have been doing in terms of focus. It's just a really pretty setup because we have like the, the red brick and her red sweater and like her blonde hair. For the portrait just looks really beautiful the eyes are super sharp so i love that um, there's no problem in focusing at all and it's like f 2.8 at 150th um, so it's really beautiful i like that i autofocus was also really sticky in both uh, photo and video and there was a great amount of detail on the skin which i always appreciate here it's a bit of a random arch but it's just really nice in terms of the backlight one thing that I really enjoyed about this lens is shooting backlit and it was a bit surprising because I was concerned that maybe the lens would have focusing issues and so on, but that was not the case at all. It handled all the light coming in really well. There was no weird lens flares or anything like that, so that was great. And all in all, it was just really fast and efficient. The focus was working very, very well, so I was really, really impressed. I just love how pin sharp this lens is. It's so good. Beautiful. I'll take a little portrait as well, I guess, here, because it's just like, oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, it's for portraits here. It's so pretty. Yeah, what you just did with the hair, kind of like by your face, beautiful. Oh, yeah, stunning. And chin down a little bit, yes. Perfect. Oh, my goodness, it's so beautiful. Yes, oh, my goodness, I love that. And one close-up here. I just want to have a 150 kind of like this. So just like more like play with your hair again, kind of here, yeah, uh-huh. It's the most inconspicuous location. It's really ugly here and this thing doesn't even look that nice, but on photos and video, it looks really nice. Look at this, you're like a magical little... Yeah, that's so gorgeous. So this is definitely a situation where the f-stop, the low f-stop and the longer focal length comes in really handy because it's not very pretty in here at all. It's pretty ugly but this just makes it look so magical because the light is coming from behind and it's just super blurry and dreamy and the roses just give this really nice bokeh in the background and it's just like this is the situation for it it's really good i am also really impressed by the bokeh at 35 at f2 as well as the background compression of 100 to 150 at 2.8 it's smooth and looks buttery while the subject is perfectly in focus beautiful so here we can go a bit more direct sunlight so we can go like f 5.6 maybe beautiful just make sure your face is more in the sun so you just have to be ever so slightly this way perfect yeah yeah uh-huh oh yeah beautiful so i can just go like 35 in here beautiful so i'm shooting f 5.6 thousand of a second because i want a bit more depth of field i want everything to be in the focus here because we have like a very nice shaping of the shadows or in the shadows 
That's really nice. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Imagine shooting a wedding or an event and only having to use one lens instead of continuously switching. The only downside for me is the lack of 24 as it gives me a little bit of distortion that I really like in my direct sunlight images, especially if I'm shooting full body. However, saying that is still definitely not a deal breaker as the 35mm gives me a great amount of room to play with and the distortion is slightly easier to control. So we're shooting on some really nice shadows here at 5.6 thousandths of a second, 35 mil. Beautiful. And then straight away I can go closer, 150. Okay, and I'll I want you to look at me, so just can't, I'll count you in, okay? Close your eyes. Okay, one, two, three. We're just going straight from like taking photos on 35 to like 150, which is really nice. I'm gonna be a bit further there. Yeah, uh huh. Beautiful. Yes. And maybe like just like this and then kind of like close your eyes, super dreamy. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's actually really pretty here. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna just take it on with kind of a higher f stop. So it's super nice and dreamy. Lower f stop. It's f4 still, but like as you see, the background is still really nice and blurry. We have a little bit of leave in the focus. I'm cropping out the stuff that is on the barricade here next to us. Beautiful. It's just really nice. Just trying to see which way. The lens is definitely quite large and on the heavy side, and it is to be expected from a glass with such a wide focal length spread. Even though it is not ideal, it's most definitely not a deal breaker, and to be perfectly honest, the weight did not bother me nearly as much as I thought it would. The lens is weather sealed and built in a way that feels really sturdy, and I feel that's the most important thing. I highly recommend that you guys try this Tamron 35 to 150. It's such a high quality glass at a very reasonable price point. With its very unique and versatile focal length and aperture range, it can easily become your one for all, as well as dramatically save you luggage space. So it's a real win-win for me. Hey guys, that's it for today. And I think it's a really amazing lens. I think it has such a wide focal range that you can choose from. I think it's good for everything. So if you are stuck and try to get one lens that is gonna be good for everything, I definitely recommend this one. Uh, before we sign off, make sure to check out Carolina. She's going to be linked in the description below. And if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time.